Hi everybody and welcome to the Witches Cauldron. So in the previous series of videos, I was talking a lot about the history of tequila and how it's different from the history of mezcal. So now we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is mezcal. So um, just as a short reminder of what we were talking about, I spoke about the importance of agaves in for Hispanic times and their uses. I also spoke a little bit about the story that has to do with the New Spain and Nueva Galicia and how Nueva Galicia started to have an industry of the distilled spirit even before the crown would permit it. Well, the Spanish crown would, would permit it. Why? Because they had different regulations and also a lot about how the tequileros, they decided to start making their vino mezcal of tequila and the regulations that took place in the 70s just using one varietal of tequila, whereas in the past they had been using other varietals and how that ecologically affected the landscape of the Mahio region, which is where they produce tequila. And then that, what did that entail? And that entailed not using a lot of varietals of agave, that thanks to this whole mezcal movement, they have been recovered in a way, and it has created new denominations of origin, just like the one that Raizilla is trying to get, and just like the one Tushka is trying to get. So in the case of Mezcal, even though they were not permitted, and that's what I love about it, because it's, you know, it's rebellion, it's rebellion against the system. Even though Mezcal wasn't being permitted to be sold in many, many uh, circumstances of life, I mean, the importance of women in Mezcal is so, so funny because what they would do is that um, they would put it in bottles, uh, whichever bottle they would find, and women would wear really long skirts and they would be along the road and they would just be, you know, standing up there and then someone would come around and they would say, hey, do you have Mezcal? And they would pull up their skirts and they would sell you the bottle of mezcal or so some stories tell. I I wasn't there at the time. I I'm not that old. <laughs> so but it's a really funny story and in a way it also reminds me a lot of what happened during Prohibition in the US, which is women were the ones that were actually selling distilled spirits. Why? Because they wouldn't be stopped by the cops. Um, the interesting thing about Mezcal and the legislation that started in the late 80s is that even though it started to copy a little bit the legislation of tequila, you know, permitting there to be aged tequila or aged Mezcal, in reality, from day one, they, they did very, very important changes. And one of them was that in the legislation of Mezcal, they would permit 80% of agave spirit and only 20% of other spirits. Whereas in the tequila leg legislation, they would let 51% of agave spirit and then the rest could be other alcohols. So for all of those that have had a horrible experience with tequila, well, the reason is because it must have been a mixed tequila and your body probably went haywire and it didn't take the spirit as it should have been taken. Also in the legislation of Mezcal, there has always been, or there has always tried to be this distinction between artisanal and industrial Mezcal. And actually that was even more so in the past few years, in the past four years, there have been changes in the legislation where they have a very distinct uh, distinction, sorry about the redundance, 
but um, they there's a distinction between artisanal, ancestral, and industrialized mezcal, whereas in tequila, they do not have this. And why is this important? Well, one of the main reasons why this is important is because you're keeping the soul, the actual soul of mezcal that in the case of mezcal, it has to do with the way that they produce it. Um, and also to really, really incorporate all these people that maybe some of them don't even know how to read and write. Some of them, I'm not saying all of them. And um, therefore, respecting their actual traditions and respecting the flavors and respecting the hand of the maker and protecting them in, uh, in a lot of ways. And that has been something that Mezcal has been fighting for a very, very long time. And also, one of the most important things is that in the case of Mezcal, you can use a lot of varietals of agave. And there are about 40 varietals of agave that are being used. We have um, more states that have the denomination of origin. There used to be only seven, now there are eight. And more and more are being incorporated in the industry. For example, one of the, of the states that can produce tequila and mezcal is Michoacan. And to be honest with you, one of the most amazing aged in a bottle, mezcal comes from Michoacan, from the region of Sitio. And they have their own traditions, and they keep their own traditions. For example, we have Guerrero also, where uh, Copriata is being produced. And I have to tell you, one of the best pechuga mezcals, which I will explain later what a pechuga mezcal means, it, it's just amazing. Of course, everybody knows Oaxaca, and that's the main center of attention in the case of mezcal. Why? Because they have more endemic varietals, you know, like the Karwinski family, which is the Quiche, the Madre Quiche, Iquiche, Barril, and all of these agaves that are micro-endemic, they have a completely different flavor and also a completely different way of being produced. In the case of Oaxaca, they also have ancestral ways of producing mezcal. You also have the region of, of Puebla that has been now incorporated. And in the case of Puebla, they use, for example, they have uh, amole mezcal, and they have mezcals that have been infused with different things in resemblance to the pechuga mezcal. Um, and again, in the beauty of the world of mezcal is that you can talk about terroir, you can talk about varietals, you can talk about the hand of the maker. And I am going to talk in the next few um, programs or the next few videos about each and one of them and their distillation process. And this is completely fascinating. It's completely mind blowing. And we'll be talking about the different states that produce mezcal. But again, one of the things that have happened in the industry is because we saw what happened ecologically in the sense of tequila. Well, a lot of mezcaleros that are very into earth and that understand the agave in so, so many ways they have decided to really fight for what they believe and to really fight for their ancestral lineage and the way that they think, and I totally agree, mezcal should be produced.